Assalamu alaikum and good evening, dear participants. This is our uh, 73rd lecture session, 24th lecture session, sorry, uh, under the banner of ECG study group, ECG basic and beyond. And today we have among us the most uh, renowned and iconic teacher, Dr. Rafiq Ahmed Sir, and Sir will deliver his speech on accelerating before the start, I'd like to request Dr. Abdul Al Jamil sir, to introduce Rafiq Ahmed sir. Though he need not any introduction, still we want to pay our respect and from, uh, pay our respect to Rafiq Ahmed sir. And I'd like to request Jamil sir to be the owner. Jamil sir. Thank you, Tushar. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I Actually, Rufik sir does not require any introduction. He is well known to us in our country. And one thing I want to mention, he's an excellent teacher. And he knows how to um, teach a complex thing in a simpler way. Uh, and I met him first in 2004, probably uh, at the end of November or at the beginning of December. Uh, at that time, I just came back uh, after having my training in EP from All India Institute of Medical Science, Delhi. And there I learned a lot of things. Uh, we were doing workshop in NICBD. Uh, Atarbhai, uh, Mohsin were there. And there I found how easily he can teach a complex thing. What I tried to learn in Delhi I used to read books and see how they do the cases. Uh, sometimes they answer, sometimes they do not answer. But I could make those things clear from uh, Rafik sir. And uh, he is the person who uh, we owe to him as because he started this electrophysiology in Bangladesh. And we are very much uh, proud of him to be as our teacher. Uh, Rafik sir, please. Thank you. Uh, alaikum. Good evening. So we're going to talk about actual arrhythmias. Um, interestingly, uh, or whatever it is, um, there is an overlap uh, between supraventricular tachycardia and actual arrhythmias because anything supraventricular um, is atrial. So anyway, I like to teach, but one thing I do, I like fishing, uh, among other things. Um, I went to... I want to show you Alaska. This is where I live. This is part of the United States. This belonged to Russia and the United States bought it. On plane, it is about eight hour flight. So it's a long way. I decided to go there and Alaska is interesting. There's a lot of mountains and snow. And then if you see all these things, the rivers, they come down. And this is the time that uh, to catch salmon fish. And we went salmon fishing. So this is one of the rivers, beautiful river. Reminded me of Bangladesh in my childhood. Very clean river, water is beautiful, green. And this is one of the evening. And this is one of the fish I caught, it's a salmon fish. Um, this is the time salmon comes uh, to the river to spawn and you can catch them. And But there is a limit how many you can catch in a day. We went as a group, this is the whole group. Um, there are a bunch of friends, we caught a bunch of fishes. There, there are two rivers. This river is almost like rivers in Bangladesh because these are flat ground. But other places, it's mountainous. So that's uh, my fishing expedition trip. Um, we, I want, today I want uh, audience to participate and I would like to call people to uh, read ECGs with me. But this, I'm going to start with this one. Uh, you can see this is a sinus rhythm. Why it is sinus? We always talk about sinus rhythm because there is a P wave before QRS complex. But we also need to look at the morphology of the P wave. If it is sinus, it should be upright in lead one and AVL. AVN is almost flat here, two, three AVF. And then biphasic in V1 and then upright in V5, V6. Why does it happen? If you look this way, this is the heart. This is where the sinus node is and the electricity is generated and it's going downward and to the left. 
So if it is coming down, it is going to move away from lead AVR, it is going to be negative. And it's going on this side, so it should be positive in lead one, definitely positive. In lead, can you turn the background off, please? Somebody's background is, if you could mute everybody, that'll be great. Thank you. And as the electricity is coming down, it is upright in lead two, three AVF. And if you look at lead V1, it's by physics Y, the initial electricity is coming towards V1, but when it is moving to the left atrium, it is moving away from it, that produces a negative deflection. So the initial part is right atrium, next part is left atrium. And then of course, V4, V5, V6, they are all upright. And beyond V2, it's all upright. There can be some variation in lead two, three AVF, depending on the rotation of the heart, but overall, this will be the morphology of, um, okay. One other thing that remember that if the if P wave comes from here, it will be upright in two, three AVF, but the morphology will, or let's say left atrial appendage, it will be upright in two, three AVF, but negative in lead one. So that's why it's important to look at lead one also uh, when you look at the morphology. Um, we still have somebody's background on. Okay. So uh, can we have somebody from the audience come and join me? Anybody, please join. You don't have to, I know you know, but you don't have to be a master of it. Atar Tushar, can you get somebody? Yeah, Dr. Abida, please. Is there Abida, Dr. Abida? Has anyone volunteers, Dr. Tushar? Sir. As you start. Sir, uh, can I try? Mm -hmm. No, 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 it, 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 not for you. Okay. So, Abhi, yeah, you, you can call Abida, Dr. Abida. Uh, I think Abida is Abida, Abida Abida is muted and also videos. Naim Hassan want to tell something. Okay, uh, good. You, Naim Hassan, uh, Kamrul Bhai, please make Naim Hassan Asa, visible yes, and audible. Assalamualaikum, sir. Naim yes, Hassan, introduce yourself and then. I am Dr. Naim, a medical officer, Ranishanko Lupadala Health Complex. Good. So, what do you think oh. of this ECG? I'll give you a heart rate. It's about 140. Yes, sir. In this ECG, uh, her heart rate is 140 beats per minute. The rhythm is regular and it is sinus as there is P wave uh, in lead 1, 2, 3, and AVF. And all are positive and the QRS is narrow. Yep. Uh, so it is regular narrow complex tachycardia. But Most what likely is it? sinus tachycardia. Most likely or definitely? So definitely sinus tachycardia. Yes, definitely sinus tachycardia. Because look at lead V1 also, it's biphasic. So it cannot be any more clear than this. But you also have to describe the ST segment here. If you look at the, it's the incidental finding for this, and that is ST depression in lead V3 to V6 and lead one AVF. And you don't have to make a definitive diagnosis. You say that the ST segment depression is present, I will make a comment, consider ischemia. But you have to compare. It can be a chronic change also. Thank you, so stay with me. We'll do other ECGs with you. So this is um, sinus rate is low, heart rate is 45, um, and normal PR interval, QR duration. So this ECG, I'm going to describe sinus bradycardia, normal PR interval, normal QR duration, QT interval, no stitch segment change. So except for sinus bradycardia, this is a normal ECG. Thank you. Anybody want to do this? Again, any volunteers can raise your hand, please. Thank 
I'm sure somebody should be will be interested. Shubhru, possibly all are muted. They cannot hear us. Shubhru. Yes, sir. The mute, they should be able to hear us. Oh, for you. Okay. Sir, can I? Yes, yes please. Sir. Introduce yourself. Sir, I'm Dr. Naim, sir. Uh, oh, good. Previously Go answered. Yeah, fine. So heart rate is 66. I'll give you the heart rate. So tell me about this ECG. Uh, here, heart rate is 66 beats per minute and rhythm is... Uh, sir, irregular. Yes. And, and there is... Uh, it is sinus rhythm as there is P wave in 2-3 AVF and these are upright. Yes. And there is uh, RSR complex in V1 and V2. Yep. So it is sinus arrhythmia with right bundle branch block. Well, the, if you look at the keyword is duration, yes, there is RSR pattern, but the keyword is duration is about less than 100 milliseconds. So it's not right bundle branch block as way we define. It can be a normal variant or maybe right sided conduction delay. Why so irregularity? This is why did you think it's sinus arrhythmia? You are correct, but why? Why I can argue that these are supraventricular premature beat? Right? But sir, all all QRS complex and P waves looks are same. And yes, that's one. Secondly, look at the pattern. Slow, fast, right? And then yes, slow, sir. fast. How many times fast in, in 10 seconds? Two yes, times, sir. right? And two times fast. Yes, and sir. then in one minute, how many times then? 12. 12 times, sir exactly the rate of respiration. So that's yes. how it is. So it, this is a 10 second paper and we have two fluctuations: slow, fast, slow, fast. And this happened 12 times a minute, which is exactly the rate of respiration. And this can change if, uh, give me, excuse me for a second. So this can change um, with uh, respir if the respiration rate changes. But remember one thing, that if somebody, if a patient is very sick and the respiration rate is 24, 30, they will not have sinus arrhythmia because of um, underlying um, autonomic tone change. Thank you. So anybody for this one? Yeah. That's an interesting ECG, sir. Who is this? Anyone can raise your hand. Uh, or before that. Naim, you can continue. Naim, Naim yes, sir, you can continue, please. OK, sir. Sir, here heart rate is 78 beats per minute. Okay. The rhythm is regular, mm -hmm. uh, but here P waves are inverted in lead two, three, and AVF, and okay. upright in lead V one. Okay. And the QRS complex is narrow, and okay. PR interval is about one hundred twenty. One hundred twenty. Mm. And. So what is your diagnosis? Sorry. It is not sinus, right? Yes, sir, it is not sinus. What is it? So, it's so atrial it rhythm. Ectopic atrial Yes, rhythm. so this is ectopic atrial rhythm. At the same time, you have to mention the ST segment, a little bit, some downstoping ST segment by physics T wave. Uh, I don't know what the signal, but look at it. One of the thing is that it's true that it is coming two, three AVF is inverted. That means 
if we look at this, I have taken those is those all the P waves from this ECG and I have superimposed on the leads. Two, three AVF is negative, AVR is positive. That means this impulse is moving upwards away from two, three and towards the AVR. That's why it is positive in AVR and negative in those leads. Then I also looked at lead V6. So if it is inferior, it can be anywhere, right atm, left atm. So if you go a little bit beyond this, in this case, V6 is negative. Only way V6 can be negative, if it is coming from bottom left corner of the atrium, left atrium. That means it is moving away from V6 and then positive in V1. So this is a very typical example of left atrial I mean, normally this, this in any cardiology exam, they will put this um, ECG. So thank you, Naim. Sir, uh, sir yeah. uh, just to, just to, uh, just to have a for, uh, discussion, uh, if anybody says this is uh, junctional rhythm. Yes, okay. Uh, yes. Will it be uh, wrong? Okay, so the question would be, is it junctional rhythm? First of all, so for the audience, what junctional rhythm means, okay, I'm going to go back. Let's see if I have a picture. Uh, so we'll come to this. If junction means it's the impulse is originating from the AV node and it will go backward. Normally it will be closer, but it can still be junction rhythm if there is a retrograde delay or anti-grade delay. However, if it was junctional rhythm, it would go from here, this way, and this way. So two, three AVF will be negative, AVR will be positive, V6 will not be negative. So that is the difference. V1 will be almost similar peak, but V6 will not be negative because the impulse will be moving towards, that's why it's not a junction rhythm. If you can see uh, the we have that clear. Yes, sir. sir uh, and just another question. So yeah. does it make any difference uh, if the impulse origin from low atrium or the junction? Does well, it have any clinical difference? No, there is, no, there is a difference because junctional rhythm means it's an automatic junctional arrhythmia. So it's a different arrhythmia. And so it is not atrial arrhythmia. Why do, clinical wise, if the rate is good, it doesn't really make any difference. Why do I then need to know these things? It is the exercise of the brain to go beyond just managing patients. And it will give you understanding of future arrhythmias. So clinically, uh, and junctional rhythm is not very common in, in adults. So a junctional tachycardia we see more in pediatric patient after surgery, or sometimes accelerated junctional rhythm, but these patients clinically do very well. Thank you. Um, yes. I'm going to ask the question, sir. That's few cases of our operative cases. Uh, we, in pre-operative echo, we get this low actual focus or sometimes junctional. So yeah. at that time, should we counsel the parents about that after surgery, it can be accelerated? Means is there any correlation after surgery? Anything can happen? Yes, of course. Like I mean, ASD closer or sinus venous as ASD. Yes, I, I think this is in Haruma, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So pediatric, post-pediatric surgery, they get a lot of junction tachycardia. And most of the time it will resolve. Um, because one of the things that happens with the children that in adults, the junction bits between 40 and 60. In children, they can beat faster inherently. That's one issue. And then when you have autonomic tone increase, it can get even worse. Very rarely they need ablation, but it, it is also difficult to ablation to do ablation because you can then create heart block. Now definitely I will want the family. Yes. Thank you. So these are different kinds of arrhythmias that we talk about. Sinus node, there can be DNT within sinus node also, reentrance sinus node tachycardia. Atrial tachycardia, this can be automatic or re-entry, a mineral re-entry tachycardia, atrioventricular re-entry, um, and then of course atrial fibrillation, which is micro re tachycardia, uh, all, all over the atrium. 
Anybody for this one? We need to get somebody else to come and talk to us. Uh, uh, Dr. T. Ganguly. Yes, please. Do you want to uh, please make Dr. T. Ganguly as uh, and visible and uh, audible? Kamrul. Kamrul, bhai. He is audible. Okay. Dr. Ganguly, can you please uh, uh, start your explanation or discussion? Dr. Ganguly, can you hear us? Oh. No. So, nobody else? All right, so I mean, if you look at this ECG, one of the key thing is it's irregular. Who is it? Hello, sir, I'm Dr. Asif. Hi, can I Dr. Asif, please, please, can you please talk to us? There is another <laughs> background noise. Can you turn that off, please? So the, uh, the yes. sir, the ECG showing rhythm is regularly irregular, uh, PA, is absent uh, and fibrillatory uh, wave uh, present in the V1 and V2 uh, uh -huh. and uh, rate is approximately 84 uh, bits per minute. Okay. Uh, mm, this uh, my uh, this diagnosis is uh, uh, atrial fibrillation. So yes. Yeah. Any other finding? Oh, Any other finding? Sir, uh, for progression of R wave, can we say that? Yes, definitely. Yeah. You have to mention those. So, actual fibrillation with control, poor R wave progression of V1 through V4. What else? Another finding that you need to mention borderline low voltage, except for lead two. Low voltage. Oh, All yes, of sir. them are. So, what is the clinical significance? I don't know, but I think that is something we need to mention. It can be an obese patient, it can be pericardial effusion, all those things have to be, or COPD patient can have low. So, th those are the findings. And then diffuse T wave flattening that you have to mention here. Sir, Thank you, Ashish. Sir. Yeah. Sir, yes, sir. sir, for our student in the examination hall, in front of the examination board, many of our teachers ask the differential diagnosis of the CCC. Sir, is there any differential? Well, I mean, the, the differential, the, yes, uh, all, everything should have differential diagnosis. Of course, um, we talked about sinus arrhythmia, right? That is one possibility, but there is no P wave, discrete. Um, then the poor RO progression, you have a diagnosis for that. Um, the, the finding wise, this one is so irregular that only thing that can come in mind will be, the other part will be that a multifocal arterial tachycardia with variable conduction. And that again is negated by, so let's go back. Irregular RR interval, you can see in actual fibrillation, number one, actual flutter with variable AV conduction and multifocal arterial tachycardia with variable conduction. So those are the few things that you have to um, think of. At the same, Asif, stay with us. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Okay. So, well, how about this one? What is this? Heart rate one thirty two. Yes, sir. Is that uh, Dr. TCG uh, showing uh, there is a heart rate regular in rhythm, uh, heart rate about 132 beats per minute, and uh, there is a no uh, reasonable P wave seen uh, uh -huh. before the QRS complex, and uh -huh. uh, Bortes uh, uh, is uh, normal. Okay. And Bortes is normal. So, uh, so and my T inversion in the V1, V2, maybe V3. Uh, okay. Uh, my diagnosis is the, this the supraventricular tachycardia. Yes. So this is something, very, the reason I put this 
is exactly for the same reason. If I look at, suddenly look at it, it looks very regular. But look at my pointer. This interval and this interval is different. This interval is different. This is longer, this is shorter. So I'm going to go look at this now. What do you think, Asif, now? What, what is your diagnosis now? Does it change? Yes, sir. This is what changed clearly. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, my diagnosis. This is the first uh, atrial fibrillation. Yes. So this is what happens. Uh, what you did is exactly what I would have done probably, that when atrial fibrillation gets faster, it can look very regular. But even then, when you look at very carefully, you can see the irregularity. So please don't be fooled by that. Um, so look at this point and then ask for a longer rhythm tip. So it's a fib with rapid ventricular response that really mimic like um, in the in the short part. So atrial fib can look regular, but it is never regular. Only one case a fib will become regular is when you have underlying complete heart block. Otherwise, it's always irregular. Um, anybody else here to do this? Asif, thank you. Sir. Uh, Marufa, sir. Sir, yeah. the classic teaching of uh, coarse atrial fibrillation and fine atrial fibrillation, depending on the morphology of the P or the baseline, does it really change or does it have clinical implications? Okay. So the question is coarse atrial fibrillation versus uh, fine atrial fibrillation. Clinically, it doesn't matter at all. It depends on the signals. Um, if you do EKG, you can have right at time in atrial fibrillation, left at time in flutter. And, and or a mixture of mechanism, and that may look coarse or fine, but the clinically uh, the, is exactly the same, um, no, no difference. So who, who else will do this one? Maruf? Ashif, Maruf or Rahman? Uh. I also see Dr. Tahmina raising her hand. That's okay. So, Dr. Tahmina, can you please uh, unmute and say? Kamrul Bhai, Dr. Tahmina. She is audible. Okay. Yes, sir. Dr. Tahmina, please sir. Introduce, introduce yourself and. Uh, I am Tahmina Sultana, uh, medical officer of Bangladesh Specialist Hospital. Thank you. Uh, so I'll give you the heart rate. Heart rate is 120. Heart rate is 120. The lead one, the key rate is visible. Uh, key wallet to complex is uh, narrow. Uh, lead to... Um, I think so it's narrow complex tachycardia because of the rhythm is regular. Sure. Perfect. So narrow complex tachycardia, sure. but I want a little bit beyond narrow complex. What type do you think it is? Supraventricular tachycardia. Yes, but same thing. Supraventricular tachycardia, narrow, but can you differentiate like is it atrial flutter? Is it atrial tachycardia? Is it sinus tachycardia? Any idea? Uh, so it is sinus tachycardia because it is it is it is atrial flutter. That means it is uh, it appears to like appearance. Also, so it seems like atrial flutter, but I don't think so because the uh, uh, no all no are... no 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 just wait. Okay, it, look at lead two. If you if we ignore the QRS complexes, what does it look like? Is it, does it look like a saw? Yeah. So your initial hunch is right. If you look at lead two, if you look at lead AVR, there is a PQRS, PQRS. But if you look at lead two and get rid of, if I erase the QRS complex, it looks like a saw and look at, so when I get a longer rhythm strip, rhythm lead to, you can see the flutter waves. Initially here, it looks like the T wave, but look here, you can see the flutter. So your 
you see, always go with your one hunch. So my advice to all of you is that you come to one diagnosis and then include it or exclude it. I am wrong a lot of times. So don't worry about being wrong, wrong or right. So you start with the diagnosis. So your initial hunch was perfect, FTL flutter. Then of course, alternate, we'll have to think of sinus tachycardia because rate of 120. Um, it can be, um, a, as you said, supraventricular tachycardia and we're going to exclude that. So because we had a long rhythm strip, we could see it very, very clearly that this is FTL flutter. Thank you. Um, anybody for this one? <laughs> Dr. Pramila, can you please continue? Uh, so anyway, I, I think I'm going to continue and then we'll, we'll try to find somebody else also. So this rate is 115. The reason I put this one, there is an overlap. So if I look at lead V1, you can see the P wave and the QRS complex, or some people may argue that is part of the QRS complex. But here in look at lead V4, you can see PQRS, PQRS. But it's something always, it always bugs me when I see something a rate like this, but then I try to look for a second one. So if you look at lead V4, where my arrow is, there is a P wave, and maybe there is something on the T wave. And if I keep moving, I can always see this. So this, and also here, when you look at it, Again, like a sawtooth, if we ignore the QRS complex. So this is a slow atrial flutter with two to one conduction. And um, it, you have to keep that in mind. And the, of course, if you want to conform or exclude it, you can give adenosine or a character science massage. Um, and that will clearly show you. And look at lead V1, you can see the two P waves. So this is atrial flutter. And of course, when atrial flutter is slow, it's very, very easy to diagnose. You can see the flutter waves um, and the QRS complexes. Um, this is sinus beat and the premature beat, sinus beat, premature beat. So these are the sinus rhythm with supraventricular premature beat. Um, anybody wants to tell me about this bit? Probably not. If you can find somebody, fine, but I'll continue. Um, so this is an aberrant conduction because if you look at lead V1, this is the right bundle morphology and there's a P wave before the Q. How do I know there is a P wave? Because if you look at here, there, there is no distortion of the T wave, but there is clearly distortion of the T wave. So this is a um, premature beat, uh, supraventricular premature beat with aberrant conduction. So, so there's a doctor, uh, Dr. A. Paul. Uh, okay. Do you want to uh, please unmute Dr. A. Paul? Yes, sir. Hello. So what Hello. do you think of this? Okay. Uh, this, uh, you, you see, heart rate is on the top, 101 beats per minute. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, looks like a first degree AV block. Yes. The poor coordination of our waves in the anterior leads. And uh, there are premature ventricular ectopics. Okay. See some of the T wave inversions in V3. Uh, sorry, uh, V4. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, no, I'm not sure. Uh, first degree AV block and then, uh, with the normal sinus rhythm. Uh, with the, uh, occasional preventricular ectopics. So, what is it? your final conclusion? Is uh, there are some Q waves in inferior legs through. Three ABF. Um, okay. Could be a older mm. So your diagnosis is sinus tachycardia. Do you agree with that? Uh, sinus tachycardia. Yes, sir. I go with sinus tachycardia. Yeah. That's what I thought. And this was this is ECG from one of the patients in our hospital. And everybody has been reporting it. When I saw this ECG, something didn't seem to me to be right. And then I went back and looked up his old ECGs. His heart rate has always been at 101 beats per minute. Does it change anything? People cannot be in sinus tachycardia at the same rate for a long period of time. And this is the ECG two years ago on the same patient. You can see very, very clearly here now that this patient had acute atrial tachycardia. And 
if you go to two hour intervals, so that was actual attack with two to one conduction. So keep that in mind, but your diagnosis is absolutely correct. If I look at this ECG, I don't have any old ECG. My initial diagnosis will be sinus tachycardia with first degree AV blood, but I will definitely get a follow-up ECG within a few days to make sure that this is nothing else. And, and this is sir, what happened. When I, sir, yeah. just, yeah. just on the previous ECG. Yes. Just the previous ECG. Sir, if we look at AVR. Yes. Does it make it clear? Uh, well, it's, it is, the, the problem is, AVR, one can say this is the P wave and it's upright. One on can always say the negative component is R wave, P wave. So that's the problem. And uh, yes, but, I mean the, but uh, if we follow the AVR, yes. uh, the suspicion gets a strong, bit stronger because of the notch following QRS and they yes. have notch in the in between QRS. And then again, if we measure that, uh, then it seems regular. Yes. And that's why sir, I asked the question. Yes, definitely. But as um, he said, I think uh, his diagnosis was uh, a sinus first degree AV block will be the primary diagnosis. But if the date is like this, um, at one point in CG, it will be almost impossible to deny diagnosis of sinus tachycardia. But a follow-up ECG or a previous ECG like I have here, it confirms the diagnosis. And that's why it's important that when you see a patient with a constant heart rate, please don't ignore it. Um, if you find that it stays at a fixed rate, then always think of some kind of supraventricular tachycardia. Um, thank you. Uh, so this is another ECG. If you look at here, it's clearly sinus, because you see that Lead one is positive, two, three AVF positive, sinus tag. But then it suddenly stops and starts. And this is a 76 year old male. This is a very common finding in older patients. This is most likely sinus node reentrant tachycardia. A clinical significance is not great, but it can respond to calcium channel blockers. So, but keep that in mind. If you elder, elderly patient, if you find tachycardia, which looks exactly like sinus tachycardia, um, you can, Diagnose sinus node. It can become a problem in younger people. They can have incessant sinus node reentrant tachycardia, and one of the treatment is um, either use beta blocker, calcium channel, or you can ablate the part of the sinus node to cure this rhythm problem. So we talk about few things about relation between to diagnose this arrhythmia. We talk about this long thing that we talk about long RP tachycardia, short RP tachycardia. Look at this. Somebody who has sinus tachycardia, the P wave is coming from the sinus node. It takes certain period of time to come to the AV node and QRS complex. And that we know that normal PR interval is between 120 to 200 milliseconds. And so a sinus tachycardia will produce a long RP tachycardia. Same with atrial tachycardia. If the P wave is coming from here, it is almost covering the same distance like sinus beat. So it will also have long RP tachycardia. So please remember, if the RP is long, it is sinus tach or atrial tachycardia. Oh. Then, then you differentiate based on the morphology of the P wave. So this is one. Hello? Link? No, Zoom. Popibala is trying from the link. Oh. I think. Okay. Sir. Copy. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Can you hear us? Yes. Thank you, sir. How are you? So you are quite a painter. Yes. Thank you, sir. For your compliment. Yeah, good picture. I keep look at your, your drawings. They're really nice. It's just a side of it, sir. That's no, this is what should be good. So long RP tachycardia is either sinus tachycardia or actual tachycardia. Remember, all this algorithm that we use, everything has exception. You always say most of the time like this. This will change. If somebody has first degree AV block, this will change, totally change. P will become here and you will have short RP with a long PR, but that's the exception. So here is another patient that I have a during tachycardia. And I thought there is a P wave immediately after the QRS complex. 
And maybe I'm right because when they're in sinus rhythm, I don't see that component here. So this is a P wave immediately after the QRS come, most likely AV node will re tachycardia. And how does it happen? There is a re within the AV node. So the electricity comes down, produces the QRS complex, and then goes backward, produces the P wave. Now, depending on the speed of conduction on both sides, the P wave can be inside the QRS complex, slightly before the QRS or immediately after. Most of the time with AV node re it will be within 80 milliseconds of the QRS complex. So that's even a drainty. This is a short RP. So from R to P is short. And another example of short RP is here. This is a patient with WPW syndrome and goes into tachycardia. And I, as I said, that you, you need to use some imagination. And I, I imagine that this notch here is the P wave. And if I am correct, then it's a short RP tachycardia. Even if I didn't have the previous ECG, I will consider the possibility of a short RP tachycardia atrioventricular re -entry. Am I correct? Yes. With this with, uh, the same patient in tracardiac ECG, you can see this atrial channel, and this is the QR. There is a retrograde P wave, just the same location where I found before. And how does it happen? It's going backward like this. And it's again not taking humongous amount of time. So that's the short RP tachycardia. So short to summarize it. If you cannot see a P wave in the as supraventricular tachycardia, it is most likely AV node reentry. If you see a P wave immediately after the QRS complex with a RP shorter than PR, then it is either AV node reentry or atrioventricular reentry. And then if you see long RP tachycardia, this is either atrial tachycardia or sinus tachycardia. And then of course there are exceptions that you can have long RP tachycardia, atypical AV node re -NTA, but primary will be like this. No P wave visible AV NRT. Immediately after the QRS short RP tachycardia, AV node re -NTA or AVRT, and then long RP tachycardia will be atrial tachycardia, sinus tachycardia. Don't try to remember anything. So the way I learn is when I'm learning something, I want to learn simple thing first. And then over a period of time that I will learn complex thing, just riding bicycle. You want to ride bicycle on an empty road, and then you take a bad road, narrow road, traffic congested road. But if you try to ride bicycle in a busy Dhaka road, you will fail miserably. So that's how um, any learning process is. And I, I do it. When I'm trying to learn something complex, I shield myself from complex things. I just learn the simple thing first. And that gives me ability to learn the complex. Um, when you go to a meeting as a young doctor, don't get fuzzled by too many complex things. Listen to those stories, but don't remember them. Remember the simple ones. And then as you grow, um, as you mature, you learn the complex things. Can I make so a comment, this, sir? I yes, have a question yes. uh, also, sir. Please. Uh, what are the clinical significance of uh, short RP or long RP tachycardia? Clinical oh, the, significance. Oh. Clinical significance is not the question of clinical significance, it's the question of diagnostic modality. Diagnostic. So I'm, I'm, yes, I'm trying to find the tachycardia. And then once I diagnose, the, the diagnosis itself um, uh, gives me the clinical significance. And this is important for me because if I am taking a patient to the electrophysiology for electrophysiology study, yes. I want to know what it is. We just don't go blindly to EP lab. Yes. Before we do any, it's just, just like surgery. You want to open somebody's abdomen. You don't just want to open the abdomen to see what I find. You must have a diagnosis before, and that's what it is. Thank you, sir. Um, so I need somebody for this one. And uh, somebody with a little bit of imagination. Maybe Poppy will do this. Poppy, can you hear us? Uh, yes, sir. What do you think of this? Yes, sir, let's see. Heart rate 174. 174. So there seems to be a piece of uh, rate is around 174 regular mm -hmm. rhythm. Yes. And there seems to be P present in the two, three, we have inverted piece, sir. Okay. 
and RP is uh, RP, long RP, sir, long RP tachycardia, sir. Okay, so what is your diagnosis? Long RP. One diagnosis. Is it atrial uh, tachycardia? Atrial tachycardia, sir. Okay, fine. So Poppy diagnosis atrial tachycardia. I don't know about lead two, but lead three, I used some imagination and I thought this is the P wave, which is positive and negative. So if it were sinus, long RP tachycardia is sinus tachycardia, second will be atrial tachycardia, and then other can be exceptions. Um, atypical AV node GNT, atypical AVRT. So this is biphasic. So I expanded this thing. So what I did, I measured this. And if my imagination is correct, this is the retrograde P wave. And I measured R, RP is 220 and PR is 120. So that puts us in this category, either atrial tachycardia or sinus. Now, if it were sinus tachycardia, in lead three, I should have found the P wave upright. So that's not. So my diagnosis is atrial tachycardia. Question is, that's my imagination. Is my fairy tale correct? To prove that, we gave adenosine to this patient. And look at this. When we gave adenosine, that is block, and now we can see the P waves. And this P wave is same as the one tachycardia. And this doesn't look like sinus tachycardia. This is an actual tachycardia. So we um, started with an assumption. We proved it. And that's how we have to learn. When I went to medical school, we didn't have those models. We didn't have investigation. We didn't have ECG machine. We could just imagine things, but we could never confirm our diagnosis. And so it is important in the learning process that we come to a diagnosis and we confirm those diagnoses, be it ECG, be it arrhythmia, chest pain, or any other specialty. It can be appendicitis, pancreatitis, pulmonary embolism, everything. So during your uh, training period, please do try to confirm these diagnoses. Even after that, we'll get confused. So this is atrial tachycardia. Um, and this, of course, again, um, a tachycardia heart rate of 133. Um, again, you can see that this is, this is the P wave. One can always argue this is the end of the T wave. Uh, so it is a long RP tachycardia. And the P wave is negative in 2, 3 AVF and also V4, V5, V6. And remember that we had a case in the beginning, I showed that was left atrial tachycardia. Um, I'm going to skip through this. Uh, so this is, can, can somebody do that? We'll do another 10 minutes, right? Sure, yes, sir. Sir. sure. Okay, sir. so 44-year-old man with pneumonia and pulse is 144 blood pressure. This is the uh, ECG. Anybody to do this? Please uh, raise your hand. Uh, we won't uh, wait too long because the time is short. Uh, Dr. Paul, please, Dr. Paul, can you please introduce yourself and then say we don't know about the, your uh, hospital you are working. Okay. I'm Hello. Dr. Paul. We can't hear you, Dr. Paul. Am I audible now? Yes, 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 we can yes. hear. I am Dr. Paul, working in one of the cardiac center in Kerala, that is the southern part of India. Oh, nice. Thanks for joining us. Okay. I am regularly joining you on Sundays. Sure. Thank so you, what you very think? much. Yeah. Uh, this one uh, looks like normal sinus rhythm uh, with the sinus tachycardia. Yes. Uh, so, yes. So, Dr. Paul, thank you. So, please stay with us. So, this is sinus tachycardia. Why? Because there is a P wave before each QRS complex. If you see lead one looks upright, two, three AVF looks upright. Always there is a confusion. Is the P wave or is it T wave? Most likely P wave. Look at lead V1. It looks biphasic. And then I expanded it. If you look this carefully, that there's a positive and negative. So this is definitely sinus tech. The other thing that will happen, if you do this ECG, this was 4.49, 59 a.m. in the morning, 
If you do half an hour later, rate will be a little different and there'll be variation in heart rate. So sinus rhythm will never stay in one place. It will keep changing. So there's another patient. If you look at it, uh, so Dr. Paul, what do you think of this one? Heart rate is uh, 121. Uh, this looks again, uh, is it a first degree AV block or uh, tachycardia with the first degree AV block? Yep. So um, th this gets a little confusing because if somebody has first degree AV block, the P gets superimposed on the T wave. Oh. And then you kind of get confused. Is it, is it sinus stack? or is it some kind of supraventricular tachycardia with a, like this is a short RP tachycardia. But that's the first thing. And second, if there is variation from time to time. And then if I do the same patient, a little bit different time, you can see the first degree will look. So, and I put both together. You see, this is the during normal sinus rate. And this is during tachycardia, there is, there is a PR and the, the morphology of the P waves. So keep those in mind. Um, one of the key features to distinguish sinus tachycardia with other re-entrance supraventricular tachycardia, that rate in sinus tach, even in the sick patient, there will be variation. Um, 130, then 135, 128, it will never be at 130 for a period of time. Um, this is another ECG. Um, you can see that sinus beat, sinus beat, and then there are, is a premature beat. So, and then there is a short run of um, atrial tachycardia. Um, this is again, you can see this ECG is interesting because if you look at lead, at, suddenly if you look at it, it looks chaotic and irregular. So th that's one thing that when you look at an ECG, take a pause and look at, is there irregular or irregular? So there is regular here, but the P wave is inverted and there is another premature bit. And then there are two sinus bits and then there's a premature bit, sinus bit, probably sinus bit, a premature. And that gives a chaotic. So. When you suddenly look at a scenario, it look, may look chaotic, but this is sinus with atrial tachycardia and supraventricular premature beat. This ECG was very confusing for us, and we looked at it. Dr. Paul, you, you are here. Are you still here with us? Okay. What do you think of this? Uh, this looks like a white congress tachycardia. Yeah. So this, yes, scenario is confusing because EF is 40%, heart rate 187. So your, what is your diagnosis? Is this waiting, sir? Well, yeah, that's what we thought. But it didn't feel, fit into any pattern. If you look carefully in lead V1, you see, look, QRS looks kind of narrow and there is a terminal component. So we found another ECG. What this patient had actually supraventricular tachycardia with underlying right bundle brain fog. But for some reason, the machine, there is something wrong with this machine. So please also remember that there can be artifact due to machine problem. And it gave rise to this funny looking ECG. If you look at lead V6, you can see there is in interspersed looks like narrow. And then there is a funny component. So even though this looked like VT, it was actually supraventricular tachycardia. That was a artifact. And then we, this was given adenosine and look at this, when the rate, I think it was cardiogenic rate slowed down, basically it was an atrial tachycardia with right bundle mind block. And how confusing that ECG, initial ECG looked. Yes, but if I looked at this ECG, if somebody told me VT, I'll say, yes, your diagnosis is correct. But then you, you just exclude those things. Look at the hemodynamic stability and other, all other things of the patient. I think we're going to stop here. Uh, so th this is another one, um, you can, it's a white QRS tachycardia, but what struck me was that initial component, le left bundle type white QRS, but initial R wave in V1, V2, V3 is narrow. And I thought this is supraventricular tachycardia. Everybody was betting, betting on VT, but if you look at it, that when it slows down, pauses, same morphology. So this is some kind of supraventricular arrhythmia. I don't know what type it was with underlying left bundle bind block. I'm going to stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And once again, uh, you showed an excellent bunch of cases.
ECGs with easiest possible explanations. So I'd like to request Arthur sir to start the discussion. Arthur, listen. As an excellent session. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Naeem, Dr. Ashif, and Dr. Paul from Kerala. Congratulations and thank you very much for participating with us. Actually, this program is for you. We'll be glad if you learn from it. So Dr. Naeem, Dr. Ashif, and Dr. Paul, please join every, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is alternate Sunday. And also and Dr. Uh, Marufa, sir, Dr. Right, Marufa. Uh, also Dr. Marufa, and I also request all of our participants, that is those who hesitate to respond, nothing to mind actually. This is, this is a learning session and you always try to learn it. And again, I also uh, congratulate Dr. Naharuma, sir. She is also a great teacher, observer. We also learn another session from Dr. Naharuma. Please get ready. We want to, that this, uh, this, this forum always uh, learns to something from you. And oh, finally, sir, Dr. We, I am learning, sir. Because no, no, are... Naharuma, you are learning and we also want to learn from you, your specialty, sir. She is actually very, very much good in pediatric ECG. So we want a session from Dr. Naruma. She is excellent in pediatric ECG, sir. Yeah. I will try, sir, but I am learning. We uh, we don't have, sir, uh, ECG sessions in pediatric populations. So sometimes we are very much afraid of this, what will happen, because we okay. don't uh, practice much more, sir. Okay, so we have a plan to arrange uh, three or four uh, series of lectures on pediatric ECG in soon. And definitely, we will be glad to have you as a teacher. So, yes, yes. Again, sir, uh, Dr. Poppy, after a long time, I see you. Nice Thank to see you. Sir. Thank you very yes, much sir. for joining us, Dr. Poppy. And finally, I must congratulate sir. I always learn many things from sir, that is knowledge, how to teach, how to talk, really. This is my memorable session all the days. Dr. Govinda Paul is with us. So it Thank is you, excellent. Sir. Today was an excellent session. And I finally, I again uh, congratulate sir. And sir, actually, uh, every day, that is, uh, if you are a speaker in every day, nobody will mind, sir. But <laughs> Thank, sir. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I think it's good for me. I mean, that's how I keep my knowledge up. Is you the, the one of the things that you do is you compete with young people, and that's how you keep young. Otherwise, I'll get old. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. So again, uh, uh, that is the Sunday. That uh, what is the date, Ashif? That is the Sunday. That is next Sunday. So I like to request everybody to participate in our program, and I will exactly. just soon declare the what will be the talk of the session. So thank you very much. I'd like to conclude the session, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Govindo, thank you. Thank, we'll thank you, Jamil, sir. Excellent. Thank session, you, Jamil. Bye. Jamil, thank you very much for you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.